And I am trying to put this mask over my face, but um, I'm just really just trying to cover up this peeling. My skin is peeling. I got a chemical peel. And you can see the skin is coming off. When this, when the lady showed me, I guess that's the Tisha, showed me the picture of what um, um, the services that they had, and she showed me the chemical peeling. I, I saw the beautiful woman. I was like, hey, I hope I look just like, like that woman, but I'm not going to turn into a, a beautiful woman with thick, arched eyebrows. I'm just going to look like a different version of myself. But um, now that my skin's peeling, I'm like, what? Just, where is the difference? What is that? What is the reason I went through that pain? But um, whatever. She also said I really don't have a lot of um, issues, but um, with my face except pigmentation, it was dark around my under eye and around my mouth. So that's where it's got um, peeling. Well, today I wanted to make a confession. I actually have been waking up for the past three or four, maybe five days, to my knowledge, three days where I have been waking up and just doing this repeat of coming to the library, looking for somewhere to study. I'll leave the home and my husband will be at home with the kids and he'll have to run out, do some errands, do um, attend meetings with um, the children. They're on uh, winter break right now until we go back um, uh, next week, until they go back next week. And, um, I found myself longing for connection, even reaching out to um, other people, daydreaming, lusting, looking at videos, trying to look up the picture or uh, social media account of of a gentleman from the from years ago. Um, uh, wasn't successful, but I kept, tr but I definitely tried. Is what I'm saying is that I tried. Um, Ugh. Now, if I'm blocked, that that really helps. That really, that really, really helps. Because if I was at, ooh, thank you, Jesus. If I was able to find the picture, it's literally just cl a click away to. What am I doing? A click away to uh, message them to scan through all of their all their pictures, their videos, and just <clears throat> fill my mind with their image, with their video, with whatever. And, um, I already decided, um, a few days ago that I can't watch, maybe last week, I cannot watch engagements and, um, bridal, um, uh, videos, um, and also, uh, anything, anything that has to do with a man and a woman ce celebrating together. I can't. So, and the reason is, is because I'm not there with my husband where we're doing anything together. So to see a man and a woman working on one accord is, is a, is it considered a trigger? For lack of better words, I'm going to use it as a trigger. I'm going to use the term trigger. It ignites in me jealousy, envy, desire, discontent. So I can't watch it. I should not watch it. Okay. It's not that I can't. My eyes work. The video is operable it's viewable I can it I should not watch it it sends me into a place of displeasure of my own life okay now but what am I doing to rid myself of this as a problem what am I doing to make sure to to rid myself of this problem to where I can't watch people enjoying each other and celebrating uh, baby showers and gender reveals and um, anything together. I try to look up uh, couples uh, celebrating each promotions and businesses together and for some reason I thought that that would be something that I can participate in, something I can watch but it's literally if it's a male and female um, especially if it was black, it was just more intense if it was just black for me because I could actually impose myself that I'm the woman and this is um, that guy is my my spouse. Um, no, it, it I shouldn't do any of that, so none of that's gonna work. So just no. And what I've also um, set myself into was start searching for uh, past uh, 
guys I, I used to talk casually with or just anything and I would less about them in my mind so reach trying to reach out to guys um, on social media um, it is cheating even in that state I wasn't able to locate their their picture or their account I I mean I'm confident that they have they still have if I'm blocked uh, or um, or whatever I think that's not something where I need to focus on I need to focus on the fact that what my intention was to reach out have a conversation reach out rekindle reconnect um, that's one me uh, in my mind I've been daydreaming a lot Woo! daydreaming being on trips daydreaming and the videos that I'm watching that's what I'm dreaming about the short clips are uh, like the reels on it's Instagram reels on Instagram and then videos on TikTok and just videos and images mostly videos so mostly videos I will see pieces and clips of a moment in time from other relationships and I will that's what I'll dream about I'll dream about that's my hand on his shoulder that's my uh, foot and we're playing footsie that's me looking into the mirror and then he's standing right behind me um, and most of the time it's not my spouse. It's me and that guy. This guy, scroll up, me and that guy. Scroll up, me and that guy. That's discontent, right? Um, discontent and envy? Yeah. Not jealousy, just discontent and envy. So, um, so what have, so that's, so those are two different things, right? Um, the lust is a, I think me reaching out, that's adultery, uh, the me putting put my um, self in those videos that's discontent so anyway all of that um, those are manifestations of what I'm not doing at home so at home what I'm doing I'll wake up I'll say hi hello that's it I'll go shower I'll um, post a video I'll read my bible good question girl and as soon as I stand up, all that stay right there in that air and that just, I'll just keep right then and there. I won't apply it. I won't, I didn't turn my camera around my bed. <laughs> I won't apply it. And then the application and the lack of the application is the reason why I am discontent, not happy with what I got. Um, and I, I even told myself, if I'm going to daydream, stop daydreaming about that one time when I was with that one guy and things were so peaceful, they were so great, they were so smooth. Because I do know the hardship in this marriage has forced me to run to God and come to know what it is I need to work on. It has made me aware of the laundry list of things, of characteristic traits that I am exuding that I did not know I was exuding so many <laughs> control um, lack of insensitivity of my word choices just which is just being rude harsh disrespectful um, anytime you talk to someone that is an authority figure and you elevate to yourself to their level that's the first thing that's wrong but how you talk to them is a reflection of where you place them of how you see them and so because I've put myself on my level with my husband I've been talking all kinds of all kinds of way in the same way I talk to my girlfriends which is okay because they give that I give that and our relationship is strong however with someone that's an authority figure and they're aware of their authority figure. They're aware of their authority and your lack of your recognition of it. That's the that's the formula to the discord. That's the formula to the dissension. That's the formula to the dislike between the both of you. Or the dislike from the authority figure and the oblivion from the person who's just being that's just coming off disrespectful, which is me. Which is me. So, um, finally got it. I'm disrespectful. I finally got it. And I'm disrespectful because I have been speaking to him uh, without 
inculcating and practicing uh, permission, uh, uh, requesting you know his knowledge and his opinion on things, and um, and and skipping over that and moving forward through life without implementing that. Somebody you're supposed to be cooperating with. In, a, in an honorable manner you are the cause you're the cause now they may be doing some wild stuff too but um, but it would be easier to see if you wouldn't muddle the muddy up the water with your own contribution so that's what I've been doing now um, now that I'm aware of that because I actually found that out days ago I've been asking myself, why can't I at least get conversation from him? He don't say nothing to me neither. And anytime I'm not talking like that, I'm trying to remove the the responsibility of what I'm supposed to be doing and trying to get bring him into the light. So hey, you're supposed to be doing stuff too. John chapter one verse first John chapter four. First John chapter four verse eighteen says there's no fear in love and the person who acts in fear is in fear of punishment and they haven't been perfected in love they haven't been perfected in love I want to be perfected in love I'm not perfected in love I want to be in perfect, perfect Father God perfect me in love that's going to be a process that means to me I've read this before I remember reading it like five years ago and I was just like what? Oh my god this is for the elite thought thinking people what i fear even having a conversation with my spouse because i feel like it's gonna blow up i fear saying anything above anything around anything other than good morning because i feel it's gonna be challenged and and disputed and it's not gonna come out right and i'm right anybody that is talking to <clears throat> Someone on them, someone else that they don't revere and uphold, you go what you say is gonna come out wrong. Now, if President Obama was standing right here, or if so, if, so I'm sitting right here and I'm looking at you, you watching my video, hey, how are you, whatever. But then President Obama comes into view, I'm going to change my focus and I'm going to behave differently. I may still sit here in this chair, but I'm going to. Now give him the focus. I'm going to be intentional with my word choices so that I can hear how I'm sounding as I'm talking so that I suffocate all possibility of a misunderstanding. I don't even talk like that toward him, toward anybody. I would do it for Obama. Face just peeling off, floating in the wind. I would do it for Obama. And I should do it for authorities. I should do it for authority. And I don't. I know how to do it. And I do do it. And I can't imagine how he feels seeing me do it to others. Give them that reverence. Me, for him to see me being cautious <laughs> with my words toward others. Wow. How he feels when he sees that when he experiences that and it's a different feeling if he were to see me do that for, he would see me demonstrate reverence demonstrate obedience and in the same instance turn around him and demonstrate di disrespect you ain't nobody we on the same level why you what what's wrong what's up with you why you requiring of me requesting of me expecting of me something more than I'm giving you and for me to toggle with that I feel sorry for that man this is somebody I, I was waiting to retaliate against treating me wrong what is on this Just get on my, look at this Oh, I know my face is peeling but when it peels I'm like what is this Lord help me to process things faster. I would like it. 
But if you choose not to, help me to embrace it as well. May your will be done. May your will be done totally in all ways. And help me to rest and be. Find peace in that. Find peace in what you are doing in my life. Take control. I don't be doing no better when I do stuff by myself. But I'm in constant awe and in gratitude when I see the work that you do with me. And I'm thankful. Um, I am too wicked to be really harboring the thought that I'm going to give my husband too much love. I'm too ugly in my heart. I am too full of transgression, sin, iniquity, however you want to call it. I am too full of ugliness in my heart. I am too impure to really fear that I'm going to give him too much love. <laughs> I really be thinking that. Oh, that's so funny. I might give him too much. Girl, don't worry. Um, and those sound really different. I remember not saying, oh, I wake up every morning and then I won't say anything past so, good morning. And I'm fearful of not getting into an argument. But I really do have that control. I really, the Bible say harsh words, soft words turn away, gentle words uh turn away a harsh answer gentle words turn away a harsh answer which just means that you can literally be soft and gentle in your words in your expression of yourself in your speech which I do struggle with in my speech um, excuse me which I have become aware of and and am in awareness I stand in my awareness I mean I struggled uh, before I was oblivious before but I'm aware of of it now so and by aware I in the instance when I know that um, I have failed before when I'm in those um, environments when I'm in those situations um, I I do what I know has worked in the past and so um, <clears throat> that's different from struggling but um, me not uh, saying anything past hello to my spouse is the fear and I'm not perfected in love so when it says um, there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment so I was uh, thinking that the punishment the torment was going to be another argument between he and I however I do have the capability to <laughs> not allow it there even if you were to blow up my soft and gentle answer according to the scripture scripture would equate would resort to a um gentle response from him let god let god's word at least be tried out at least try it when you do that you are abiding when you do God's word, you're, you're abiding. Not when you read it. <laughs> not when you memorize it. Not when you recite it. Not when you tell it to other people. Not when you write it down. When you do it. It says, but he who, who fears has not been made perfect in love. I have not been made perfect in love. I fear that we're going to start some problems. And now that I know that it really be my speech. And it really be my disrespect toward him. And my lack of acknowledging him as an authority figure. It, it should not be at any expense of mine. Or take away who I am as a person. But a gift to him. And my demonstration of my honoring of God. God said he is my authority. So not just trust God's word. But know that he knows more than you. He loves you. And he's not. And he doesn't owe you respect or regard, but he gives it to you. So I need to see things in God's God's way, and I need to accept his truth as truth and not as a suggestion or advice. If I take God's word as a suggestion or advice, 
then I'll think that I don't have to do it. And I'll still depend and rely on how I perceive people, places, and things. And that is how I contribute to the results that I don't want. I see God's word as truth. And, and then you'll be eager to apply his word. You'll be eager to do respond to this person or this place or this thing in the way that God has asked you to biblically and see God work. So um, I just did a video um, before this and I posted it. It's got the same yellow shirt, same earrings. And that video is saying, it's me celebrating how I spoke with my spouse about something and we, it didn't turn into an argument. I wrote a whole book. And on my other channel, I talk about that book, Argue Awareness, a cyclical, how to get out of the cyclical pattern um, of arguing. And here I am, I just finished talking to him. And yes, although I talk about speech in that book, I really do need to emphasize our contribution to the results that we don't want. Our contribution to the results that we don't want. Our contribution to the results that we don't want. We cannot take the world's advice, things off social media or whatever, unless those things are biblically um, or from the scripture. Apply the scripture, and the scripture says that a gentle answer turns away wrath. Wrath is anger, rage. So, a gentle answer. And what is gentleness? Gentleness is um, is one of the ways that the Holy Spirit can manifest in you. You can we can literally pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to come into our heart and take over, take control, and the, and just really um, uh, manifest over and over without end in our speech, in our thoughts, in our heart. And there's no delay in that. God does. God answers that, and you will, because I have. And I'm, and I really want you to know that God, God has allowed me to see how Yahweh can use your mouth and blow your blow your mind. I have said things that I was shocked that I was saying. And it was amazing at how gentle and how kind and how loving and how respectful and how reverential it was. God continued to do that work. God continued to do the work in me. God continued to perfect me in love. And I pray that he does the same in you. If you so choose. <laughs>